Black Adam, the arch enemy of Shazam. There's a lot of talk from the critics that this is a bad movie, and honestly, I liked it. Was it great? No. Was it good? Well, let's talk about it. This movie to me is the comic book equivalent of Mad Max Fury Road, as in there is lots of action with just a few scenes of downtime where the characters talk. Now Dwayne Johnson, this is the first of his new movies where I didn't see the goofy and friendly Dwayne Johnson. This is the first time I saw him as a threat and a real force of nature, and he constantly kills people in this movie. Killing comes as easy to him as breathing, and I liked that they did that part of the character right, and it got really quite violent. They pushed the PG-13 rating very well, so much so that this movie originally was rated R for the longest time until they eventually cut the movie down. So they did a fantastic job at pushing the rating, as DC always do. It even puts the PG-13 rating of Venom 1 and 2 to shame with their so-called anti-hero. I even liked the Justice Society. They were definitely underdeveloped, but at the same time, I can't say they didn't have any development either. They were given enough that I cared about them. And Doctor Fate was my favourite of all the heroes. Pierce Brosnan did a fantastic job and the stuff they do with the effects with Doctor Fate. It actually made me happy that they included that final action scene. An action scene that was thrown in very sloppily, mind you. But I gotta say, I came away thinking that this movie was... fun. I had a good time watching it. I loved how they connected this to Shazam, as Black Adam is supposed to be Shazam's main villain. The way they showed the elders that gave Billy Batson his powers was great, and it even has the first Shazam movie make more sense, as they actually reference Black Adam as their mistake. And this movie shows how he was their mistake. And this movie definitely made me fear for Shazam, should he ever face Black Adam, which I really hope he does. And I gotta say, I really do love hearing how these characters say the word Shazam, and then have lightning strike. Now this movie had jokes that didn't work. They didn't make me cringe, but they just didn't make me laugh. Now there were quite a lot that did work as well, but then you get the kid character and almost every single thing he said just fell flat on his face. He was good in some places, but he was mostly terrible in others. And I thought when the citizens got involved in the final fight, that was done in a way that was slightly cringy. It was on a similar level to the way Thor had children fight with him in Thor Love and Thunder, except not quite as ridiculous. And the movie set up some pretty good ideas which it explores a little, but then it doesn't really give them a satisfying payoff, if any. Also, I do think that Black Adam should have been set up as more of a villain by the end of the film and more of a threat to humanity, but unfortunately, he is leaning much more towards being set up as a hero rather than a villain. There was also a good build-up speech that felt like one too much where Dr. Fate says to Black Adam, we need you, and I was like, okay, I can sense that Dwayne Johnson just entered the writer's room right now. The rest of the build-up speech was great, but that one line was a bit much. Now there are two things that I think if this movie did better, most people would like it a lot more. The first is the pacing. The movie feels like everything is happening at a rapid fire pace, and the movie never calms down. And that leads to the second problem, the music. The music feels like it's always on, and it never calms down and just lets a scene sit. And as a result, the more quieter moments of the movie that are not action scenes, somehow end up feeling like action scenes. And that's not good. Having some downtime in movies is not a bad thing. Even Mad Max Fury Road had quieter moments. But Black Adam feels like it's constantly giving your ears a workout, and that does make the two hour runtime a little more stressful to sit through. I think if this movie got those two things right, then most people would like it a lot more, and the other problems would be less significant. Also, the ending is a typical comic book climax, but the part involving Doctor Fate was so freaking good, as was the way they killed the final bad guy, which was done with a Mortal Kombat fatality. So this is one of the first times where, yes, I do see this as a cliché final battle with a rubbish CGI villain, but I actually enjoyed it, which is a first for me, but that being said, I can totally see why people would hate it. In general, this movie also has what I love about the DC movies. They each have different tones and different visual styles and they all commit to them 100% and they don't make comedy the priority. There is a lot of action in the movie and it doesn't feel like typical uninspired action. You can really see the passion from the filmmakers and even from The Rock and seeing as DC have not done a mindless action blockbuster in a while, it felt like a nice one-off kind of movie to get. So if they make a sequel, I do expect them to elevate their game and put more of an extra emphasis on the story. But as far as this movie goes, I came out wanting to give it a 7 out of 10, but upon reflection, the movie does not leave as much of an impression and ultimately is a little bit forgettable. So my initial score went down from 7 to a 6 out of 10. It was a good movie, and I really enjoyed it for the big budget action film that it was, and I downright love the insane amount of variety that we are getting from DC movies lately, and I can't wait to see more from them. And as for that end credit scene, I am so happy that it happened. 
but it really does depend on what they're gonna do with it. The new trailer for Black Panther Wakanda Forever has come out, so let's give it a watch. Thank you. 